Welcome to Josh's Green Garage. On this video, we are going to be, I guess not really so much putting together, but there's a little bit of uh, some pieces that we need to put on the tractor itself for the uh, John Deere Quick Hitch. Uh, what you see is how it looks uh, when it comes out of the box. So over here, you see the hitch itself. The bag next to it is the parts it comes with. And then I have the hydraulic angling kit and it's bag of parts there. So uh, one of the reasons I got the 758 is for snow removal. Um, I went with a plow blade. Uh, the snow blower is quite expensive and I already have a walk behind snow blower um, that works fine. So I figured if anything, I can quickly push snow out of the way in a hurry and then go back and just, you know, do a, do a pass or two with the snow blower, move it all out of the way. Um, I think the two will work well together, and I saved quite a bit over buying the snowblower. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump in here, get this thing installed. Uh, from the day that I'm recording this, it's actually supposed to snow tomorrow, so uh, it's uh, very very um, important that I get this thing set up and uh, ready to plow as soon as I can. So uh, let's jump on in. So to start out, um, I'm not going to say what all tools um, at the beginning of this because I find I say what tools we're going to need and then we end up needing a bunch of other tools and then I end up going back on what I said in the beginning. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, get tools out as we go and uh, just going to go through setting this thing up. So this seems like it's going to be fairly in depth because we're going to have to add a uh, lockout valve and everything onto the SCV. So this isn't gonna be the quickest install in the world. It's not as simple as just sticking the thing on there, hooking the hydraulic outlets up and then, you know, going to town. Like there's, there's some tractor prep to this. So the first one is gonna be to open the hood and we're gonna be looking for a bolt that we need to drive out and then install these goofy looking hose guides. So, they look like this. Uh, I'm sure you've seen them if you've been looking at 758s or 700 series or whatever. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these goofy looking guides. Um, they'll stay on there. Unfortunately, they don't look the prettiest, but it is what it is. So we'll open up the hood. We're gonna first start by removing this nut. Um, the instructions say there's a retaining clip installed on the channel bolt. Um, they're calling the bolt through here A. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't appear that this has one. Um, I'm not sure specifically, um, you know, which model this was originally made for, um, but they must have made some changes. So we need to just remove that bolt and uh, remove the bolt and the nut. We're going to discard the bolt, retain the nut and then install the carriage bolt that is in the kit. So this one, which is, I'm guessing a little bit longer, and the 90 degree hose guide. So there are two hose guides, this being the 90 degree one, of course. So let's get that removed. This is a, I think half inch, yes, half inch socket. and pull out the bolt. This seems like it fits in there tight because you have the weight of the hood on it. This isn't coming out like I thought, so we use a little bit of persuasion. Okay, so with some pliers, I managed to get this bent enough that I was able to break that retaining clip off. Um, 
That was a really stupid design. I don't know who designed it that way. But there it is, the piece is off. So now we're going to put in the 90 degree along with the new carriage bolt and nut. Don't be dumb. Don't forget to put your hood mount back on like such. I think that carriage bolt is seated. Look in there. Naturally, it is not. Yes, it is. And now you can put your guide back on. And that probably just popped out of there. It did. All right, we got our first guide on. We are between the SCV right here and the axle now. Um, up forward of here is the 90 degree. Now we're gonna put the 45 degree on next. And that is in a hole that is right here on this bent part of the frame. Um, so the instructions say install. Next step is to install the 45 degree hose hanger. So this one is going to install right here. It's on a hole that's in the frame just forward of the SCV. Um, we're gonna install that with the bolt and nut. And that is that for our guides. This one hopefully should be a lot easier. It's in a better position. So, it looks like this is gonna go with the thread down. And then we're gonna put that on there. nut and I don't think that was actually a nylon nut so I think I might put some Loctite on there yes that is not any kind of lock nut I'm gonna grab some Loctite okay got some thread locker just gonna put you know a ton of that on there The uh, diesel engine, I feel like, as much as this thing vibrates, probably be a good idea, even if you have a gas engine model. Um, I feel like that bolt would fall off. I don't know why they didn't include a lock nut for that. Come on, wrench, go on there. And tighten that nicely. And there's a second hanger. Next is installing the hydraulic shutoff valve. That is this guy. Um, so this one is actually, so from John Deere, it's a very expensive part. Um, if you ever have to replace one, um, auxiliary hydraulics makes one that's a quarter turn um, and it's vastly cheaper. Uh, however, I don't think they usually have a whole lot of them in stock, so you may be waiting on a back order. Um, but we're going to install this guy. Um, I did buy uh, some stuff from Auxiliary Hydraulics. However, I opted not to go with that quarter turn lockout valve just because of the extra price and the fact that this valve comes in the quick hitch. I had no need to buy one. Um, for as much as I'm going to be switching between these, it's not going to be much for me to get under here and, you know, open this valve up. Um, really, for me, not that big a deal. So, uh, let's begin. Um, so, remove plastic caps from third ends of hydraulic shutoff valve. Uh, it says to place a container under the control valve to catch fluid that may drain out during this procedure. Um, and it also tells us to relieve pressure 
from the hydraulics. So essentially just uh, move the control uh, levers back and forth a couple times. I'm gonna do that. All right, so that should be relieved. And remove hydraulic line A from 90 degree elbow B. So that of course is this one. Obviously you're not gonna do it the other one because that doesn't have any kind of 90 degree fitting on the other end. We're gonna do that by loosening this nut. So I am going to use the double wrench method after I figure out what size these are. They look like actually some pretty large. All right, so this large nut is a 13 16th. And I'm gonna have to grab a adjustable because I don't know that I have another wrench handy that's that size. All right. I actually may not need one quite that size because to put one on this fitting, that fitting's less than three quarter. Awesome. So that fitting, probably an 18 millimeter and I don't have one. So I'm going to put my adjustable on here. Just gonna break that loose. And I probably should have had safety glasses on because if I wasn't in the right spot, I'd have hydraulic fluid in my eye. So, in lieu of a cup, I just put a paper towel down. Uh, let's see. Make sure I got all of this. All right, that is mostly drained. So I'm just going to remove this the rest of the way. So the double wrenching is more so to protect the line itself. We don't want to damage that hydraulic line. We'll put our adjustable on this other portion and the three quarter on that fitting. Break that fitting free. Probably didn't actually have to double wrench that at all because this bigger nut is just a lock nut. But better safe than sorry. We are going to fasten the hydraulic shutoff valve to the control valve. Do not tighten the nut. And then fasten the hydraulic line to hydraulic valve, tighten the nut, and then tighten the nut on the SCV side. So here's a new one. I'm now gonna remove the caps from the threads. I'm not gonna do that first. I don't know why it tells you to do that first. So, let's see, is there some hydro in here? Yeah, I'm gonna put a little hydro on that O-ring. And then why not put a little on the other one here? just in case. So, we'll put this in. Curious how it expects you to spin this on, being that there's not really clearance for it. All right, now one thing I had to do, I had to disassemble the lockout valve. Um, you just unthread this collar, uh, and then you can, you know, once you 
pull the valve out far enough you can just pull it out um just be careful there's like some grease and whatnot in there um so just don't let it get dirty so now this should fit in here i don't know why it doesn't mention that in the instructions um i don't know why it is this way i don't know if maybe a different tractor you know that this was originally made for didn't have this issue with clearance um but this one does i don't know i didn't think any of the 700s were really any different hydraulic wise including the x4s and x5s so i don't know i'm not super smart on those models so i can't say for certain but uh that's what you have to do and that's not going in any further so we'll just back that off till there All right, now fasten the hydraulic line to the hydraulic valve and tighten the nut. So that is going to be this one. And then we'll actually tighten that nut. So now that I think of it, double wrenching probably isn't even that important on this. We're still going to do it just in case. Got my adjustable. Sorry, hopefully, my arms aren't in the way. And we're tight. All right. Now it says to tighten this jam nut. So we'll do that. We'll get our adjustable on here. But we're snug on that one. Just gonna dry everything up. And then we can put our valve back in. Again, I don't know why I had to do this. It was really dumb. Tighten that up. only doing this because when you pull that out that o-ring comes out and it didn't want to go back in too easy so now you got to kind of help wrench this on until you get that in okay all right and then we'll close our valve for now i'm sure it'll tell us how to put that in order to use the front blade but we'll find out. So that is that. Hopefully um, that was somewhat of a help. If uh, you couldn't get yours on, pretty much just uh, take it apart. Um, let's move on.